10 Minutes with Toastmasters. We are a nonprofit, membership driven organization that promotes speaking and leadership skills. My name is Doris, and I'm welcoming Jill here today. How are you, Jill? I'm great, Doris. How are you today? <laughs> I almost blanked out on who is that sitting on the couch with me. It's not like we don't see each other <laughs> once a week or twice a week. Exactly. Well, thank you for being on the show today. Well, it's my pleasure. Share with me uh, how you discovered Toastmasters, what you learned, all this other good stuff. Well, you know, for me, Toastmasters really has helped me in my professional development and my mm. career. I was working for a large retail organization and they wanted me to sell their product on QVC. And I was a nervous wreck about that. I was unsure how I was going to come across to a large audience of a million people. Right. And I am very Italian and I speak with my hands. <laughs> <laughs> and I was really nervous about it, so I googled, you know, speaking advice or you know, help with public speaking, right. and it came up with Toastmasters, and realized we had a club right here in Littleton. What year was that, Jill? Jeez, I think it was 2009, and then I started off and on right around then, and then 2011 is when I sort of really became a full-fledged member. Wow. Mm -hmm. Were you able to go on that QVC show after all? I was, and honestly, it was life-changing for me in terms of being able to have that confidence to present in front of a large group. Right. And, you know, we had great sales, and it was a very successful endeavor for me personally and also for the company. Right. That's a great accomplishment. Thank you. So you're still a member of Toastmasters. I am. In fact, you are our president. I am your president as well <laughs> this year, too. For North Country Toastmasters, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so would you say that this is what you had envisioned yourself to, to become? Well, uh, I think it was a very gradual process. Right. You know, when you enter into Toastmasters, like a lot of clubs, I mean, we don't really expect for you to have to take on any major responsibilities. I think you're trying to figure out what your goals are and how right. you want to do self improvement for yourself right. and for me that did not mean a leadership role at that mm. time I was really focused on my public speaking and just wanted right. to learn how not to be nervous in front of a large crowd and use the, the right which you're doing it now you're not using your hands at all I know, so look impressed. At me. Um, <laughs> that Boston accent will come out soon though don't worry <laughs> so I didn't take a leadership position mm. early on but right. as I grew with the club you know, um, it became less imposing to think about that. And right. I wanted to take a little bit of a different track where I could really focus on some leadership skills and improving those. Wow, that's great. So what specific skills did you learn? Well, I think the first role I had, or one of the first roles was VP of Public Relations, which ironically is my job now. <laughs> <laughs> so to see sort of how Toastmasters, a large international organization, develops their public relations right. department, helped me so that I could then go ahead and create a public relations role for myself in the company that I was working for. Fantastic. So it definitely helped there, you yeah. know, for sure. Mm. And I think a Sergeant of Arms as well, that was a, a job where you're just sort of responsible for facilit facilitating the meetings right. and things like that. Just learning the structure of a meeting was so important in my professional life too. Right. I mean, I can barely go to a meeting now that doesn't have an agenda, that people aren't efficient with their time. So there's some incredibly good skills to learn there if you take a leadership track as well. Right, so I would say it's very cost effective that you go to a meeting, you have an agenda, you stick with the schedule, you start on time, end on time. If there's another topic, then you take it off yeah, right. offline, and right. you know that's one of the most. It's the one of the smallest things you can think of, but also one of the most important mm -hmm. professional skills that you can take. Because no matter where you are, if you serve in the board, I'm on the board of Boys and Girls Club, right. you know, or whatever sort of organizations you're involved in, mm -hmm. to have that structure of how a meeting runs and right. to keep it on time. You know, people's time is are va is valuable. Mm -hmm. You know, so you don't want to waste it and right. you want to be able to stay on task. And that's one of the great things that I love about our Toastmasters meetings. We have a great time. We have mm -hmm. a great group of people, but you know, we're in at six and we're out at 7.30. Right. And we follow the agenda. Mm -hmm. And if there are other topics, we can take it before or after. And right. you know, it doesn't impede on any of the fun that we have, but it, you know, right. people know that their time is valuable and we're mm -hmm. not going to push it, you know. Right, and we are there right. to learn and to develop. And so uh, we're there to support each other, however that, that looks. 
Is there a role that does resonate with you in terms of the meeting itself? I love table topics. <laughs> you know, I think as you go through this interview, you're probably going to get that from a lot of people. Table right. topics to me is something that, again, I use every day. Right. You never know where you're going to be at a cocktail party and have to do some impromptu speaking mm -hmm. or an elevator pitch, you know, where right. you have to sell your product and, you know, when you meet somebody who is a great connection. Right. Table topics for me, we hone our impromptu speaking in this one to two minute period right. and it is a lot of fun. It you is. Know, as you know, when we do, some of the things that we do are very creative mm -hmm. and they do not make you feel nervous. In fact, you know, it's empowering, but it's right. just, it's a heck of a lot of fun too. Exactly, and where you're actually thinking quickly on your feet, you may not even realize what you're saying. You may right, just be bab right. babbling something, right. but you're able to reflect back on it and go, geez, you know, I gave it a try. That was very courageous of me. So what if I fumbled along the way? I at least made the attempt, where next time I'd probably get even better at it. And that's why I love Toastmasters, that I keep practicing and getting better, as well as I'm getting better at my listening skills. I was just thinking about that when you said that, too, because yeah. as you're talking, and I think a lot of people have the inclination to think about, geez, what am I going to say next? Right. In Toastmasters, we really learn about sort of pausing Mm -hmm. listening to what the person is saying, actually really digesting it, and then moving on. And this is something that I have struggled with my whole life, and I know <laughs> my friends will you know. say, boy, she, she's come a long way with her listening skills. Maybe I could go some, a little bit further as well. But, you know, in the other thing about table topics is yeah. that we are a friendly group that mm -hmm. it's safe to practice in. It so. so is. And, you know, back to the listening skills, it is very difficult for an extrovert to be quiet. <laughs> Honestly, I'm going to I use myself. I don't know myself. who you're talking about there, Doris. Okay. <laughs> Yet, I used to be that person that would interrupt someone in mid-sentence, and I thought, oh, well, I know what they're going to say. I'm going to cover them right now and share that. Yet, it was rude of me to do that. And at the time, I was not aware of that lack of skill that I needed. And once I became a member, I thought, wow, I am really going to engross a lot of information here. And I catch myself that when I get nervous, I want to quickly talk, talk over everybody, and just wrap it up and run out of the room, where now I've learned to pause, take a few deep breaths, notice what's going on, notice the sounds, and, and digest it before moving on. And uh, it's not easy. And each day is different, just like anything else in life, right? It's not easy, but I think if you're going to master the art of communication, it's an equal part of mm -hmm. speaking, is actually listening and understanding. Right. You know? right. And again, something incredibly valuable in the professional mm -hmm. world. And you did ta uh, tap upon the word understanding, and that's another thing that I love about our group is that we evaluate each other um, at the end in terms of somebody doing a speech where we're evaluating that, that individual. And we all, our perception of what we heard, we're all processing that differently. And so that speaker has a chance to see and learn, well, what did they maybe possibly can change of on that message and so forth and so on because that really is so fundamentally important uh, because I may have understood it one way you may have heard or thought of something completely different and if their overall goal was the message to be something so off the beaten path of what we learned well then hopefully that individual can fine-tune that message to you know to get it more accurate for them oh, sure I mean how many times have I taken presentations that I've you know, need to do at work and have brought them in because the audience is very different from who I'm right, going to present. Right. But if my message is too complicated and, right. you know, the layperson can't understand it, yeah. then I need to bring it on back in. Right. And so that's where the evaluation comes in handy because mm. you can, you know, try something out and then right. get that sort of feedback, mm. right, and be able to fine tune right. it, like you said. Yeah. So super valuable. I can't say enough great things about it. Oh, course, I but, love this. Well, know. thank you so much for your time today. Oh my gosh, my I pleasure. Appreciate it. I really appreciate mm -hmm. it. Thanks. This has been Tennis with Toastmasters. If you're curious to learn more about our organization, feel free to visit us at toastmasters.org. <laughs>